Hi, I'm Kyle Cohan, the owner of Wingzone. We're proud to be associated with the Pat Dooley Show. Check us out at wingzone.com or come see us downtown on University Avenue. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Pat Dooley Show. And, of course, this is a big week, the one you've all been waiting for, FIU. Yeah, they're coming to town with Mario Cristobal. Quick, name three players from FIU. I didn't think so. But, obviously, Florida gets another win this weekend. They go to Columbia, South Carolina. We had a lovely time there, didn't we, Trish? Great time. And, uh, you know, Florida got it done again. We've seen that game before. It's kind of funny. I was standing there after the game in the press box waiting for Robbie to finish up. And one of their writers came up, came up and said, well, so what did you think? And I go, I've seen this game all year. It's the same game. And he said, yes, so have I. Because for South Carolina, always close, never quite there, always start fast in the season, never quite finish. And I think it's going to be that way for a long time. There's a culture up there. I've, I've talked about this before, but they didn't disappoint me again. Seven minutes ago, down 10, they're storming the exits. George Rogers Boulevard looks like a parking a lot. So... That's just the way it is up there, and that's the way Steve's going to have to deal with it. We don't care about that. We care about this back here. It's pretty amazing stuff when you think about what Urban Meyer's been able to do at Florida. The winningest coach in terms of percentage in the history of the SEC. Put that in your pipe. And when you think about the fact not only they won 20 in a row, but their rivals, their four big rivals, have lost 17 games. Peeps, it doesn't get any better than this if you're a Gator fan. You're on top of the mountain, and your biggest rivals are down there going, well, I wish we could be like you. You need to enjoy it. Relax. Enjoy. But I'm not going to lecture you. I promise. Certainly the game against FIU is going to be a case of Florida trying to get up big early and letting the regulars sit down and rest and get ready for Florida State the following week and then, of course, Alabama. Uh, it's unbelievable that this season is winding down this fast. Sometimes it's hard to – I always tell people before the season, and I always tell myself, embrace it, grasp it, taste it, touch it, feel it, let it pass through your colon. I mean, just enjoy the season because that's what it is. And then it's gone, just like that. Think about it. There's only two more games for Tim Tebow left in the swamp. And the suggestion's been brought to me, and I'm throwing it out there to anybody who wants to do it, uh, that the fans on, on, uh, for Florida State Senior Day, you wear some eye black and put whatever you want on it. Could be your favorite Bible verse. Could be, uh, thanks, Tim. Thanks, seniors. You know, Bobby Bowden's going to wear it. It's going to say good riddance, and, we'll, and then we'll go from there. But I think it's going to be a, an emotional day next Saturday. Certainly this Saturday is just get it out of the way. The sad thing is we got no football to watch Saturday. It's an awful, stinky Saturday for college football. It would be beautiful if you could go home afterwards and just have some fun and watch some games. There's not much on. Actually, I think the best game is probably Oregon, Arizona. So we'll watch that and have a good time. All right, let's uh, talk about the three things I learned this weekend. All right, the three things I learned this weekend. One, the Heisen race is still wide open. When is it going to be decided? Maybe December 5th when Ingram and, and Tebow go head to head. But now Toby Gerhardt's in the mix. I think Case Keenum, that bandwagon came to a screeching halt when he, you can't lose to UCF and UTEP in the same season and be a Heisman contender. Uh, but nobody's really distanced themselves again. You know, Ingram's probably the closest thing. I think if they voted right now, Mark Ingram from Alabama would be Alabama's first ever. Heisman Trophy winner. Quick trivia, who's the highest finisher ever for Alabama? If you guess David Palmer, you're right, he finished third. But uh, it, I'm just waiting for that to happen. I think a lot of the voters are. We got our Heisman ballots in the mail, but they weren't ballots. They were just pieces of paper with a password on them. I don't know, man. I used to like filling that thing out. It was always cool. You know, here's my Heisman ballot. Now, I don't even, if I don't vote, nobody's going to know except the Heisman people. Number two thing I learned is that being 55 years old stinks but it beats the alternative. I turned 55 on Saturday. Robbie turned 55 on Friday. We're happy to be alive. We're happy to have good jobs. We're happy to be covering the best team in college football and the best team and the best, uh, really the best sports program over the last four or five years. It's been an unbelievable ride, and we'll see if it takes us to Pasadena. Number three thing I learned this weekend is that you've got to consider Urban Meyer for SEC Coach of the Year. I'm serious about that. A lot of you out there going, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, you think about what he's had to deal with this year. He's had to deal with more than any coach in the country in terms of distractions, pressure, concussions, eye gougings, fines. Nobody's dealt with more than him, and yet his players, he's, he's in, they've been able to see the light at the end of his tunnel vision. And it's been an amazing run this year, this year to go 10-0 and 0 with all that's happened. A lot of the lesser teams, it wouldn't have happened. I know somebody's going to say, well, what about this guy? They were three and nine last year and now they're seven and five that's what it usually goes to but there's nobody like that in the sec this year i really believe 
Nick Saban will end, end up being the coach of the year because that team lost so much. And, and whereas Urban Meyer was bringing home his entire defense. Bringing home, bringing back his entire defense. But I think when you look at what he's done, I'd vote for him. You know, but I live in Gainesville. I'm sure that's what some of you are thinking. All right, we were going to have Charlie Strong as our guest. We had it all set up, but you'll never believe it. His wife reminded me he had an errand to run. Who, that never has happened to anybody out there, right? So we'll get Charlie on at a later date. Instead, what we're going to do is give you a treat. You're going to get to see how bad I am on this show. It comes across as so smooth, but instead we're going to bring you a very funny blooper reel. I hope you enjoy it, and then we'll come back after that, of course, with the list. The Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wingzone, locally owned and operated, featuring 15 award-winning flavors. Count on Wingzone for all of your tailgating needs. Call or order online at wingzone.com. Call for daily lunch specials. Ask about our two for 12 special. All right, now we're going to move to our next bit, and that is three things. It's the three things I learned about college football over the loop. No. <laughs> Waving the nice and the lady along. That's going to do it for the show, and I appreciate everybody for calling in. And Who called in? All right, now let's look at... All right, welcome back to the... Okay, welcome to the latest Pat Dooley show. I hope they will even start that. that. Okay, I forgot. I don't, what am I going to say? All right, I got it. Hello, and welcome to the latest Pat Dooley show. Shody? I'm not really prepared mentally to do this, so I'm mentally erect. Either or, Robbie, first question. Which team has been a bigger bust? Has it been a bigger bust? Has what it been? Am a, I, uh, has it been a bigger bust? Let's just do it in pig Latin. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Kiffin, we can't find anything in here. Dr. Football's email bag. I think that the arguments that, oh, Flavin. Well, you're nice in the bling. -ing. Today we're going to talk about Florida's game and LSU, and of course the upcoming. Up game. All right, is this going to be like this all day? Okay, you ready? That's Here we go. <laughs> oh, we so you're. I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> Thank you. All right, welcome back to Either Or, and Shane Matthews has rejoined me. We're going to ask him four questions, and Flavin, Flavin, Lavin, Lavin. All right, it's now it's that day. Slave! I'm wondering why we can't do that. All right, let's see what's in Dr. Football's email bag. And yeah, the guy that emailed me and said he'd rather have a girl's hand than a, that meaty hand, meaty, hairy hand, that sweaty, hairy, meaty hand, handing me the thing every week, I agree with you. We, sh we need to get somebody much more attractive to do it. You need a pedicure, dude. It's not a pedicure, it's a manicure. manicure. <laughs> Norm, we're going to give you two, four questions, and you give us a uh, start over. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. And we wear flip flops on Christmas Day. I blew it out. What was the next? <laughs> and when the cops come round, we don't. It came round. And when the cops came round, we don't. I'm a lover of the bayou. When the wheels touch ground. Bing, 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 bing. Robbie can't write in the winter or in the summer <laughs> or in the fall or the spring. But right now it's time to look at my latest list and we're clear. Wing Zone was started in Gainesville and has over 70 locations across the country. Our Wing Zone has been recognized by the Wing Zone Corporation in 2007 as Franchise of the Year. Call 352 331 6011 or visit us online at wingzone.com. I hopefully you enjoyed me making a fool of myself and as my wife does pretty much every day. Uh, but right now it's time to go to the list, and today's list is an interesting one, I think. Because if you remember in 19, well, I'm sorry, 2006, we came up with the top 100 Gator players of all time. Caused a lot of debate, most of it between the players and us. Because some of them didn't like, I remember going to the Super Bowl uh, that year and, and uh, Alex Brown, and I go up to him to interview him and he goes, number 46? Are you kidding me? We got a lot of that. But it was an intriguing thing because a lot of people enjoyed it. Well, since then, a lot of good players have been through here. I mean, we're talking three years. The 06 team wasn't included in there, and you've got guys like Reggie Nelson, Chris Leak. Where would they rank? But what about this year's team? If we redid the list, 
Who would be the top five guys who would get in as the top 100 players of all time? Yeah, now you're thinking about it. Number five, Aaron Hernandez. I would slide him in there. He's had an unbelievable year. He's had a good career at Florida. There aren't, I don't think there are any tight ends on that list. Maybe there's, yeah, Jim Yancey might be on there, but there aren't many. Um, Jim Yarbrough, I think, is actually on that list, but not very many. But I think Aaron Hernandez, what he's done, especially kind of being a big-time receiver, he would sneak in towards the bottom of that top 100. Number four, Carlos Dunlap. Again, when, when you look at some of the defensive ends in Florida history, I don't know that he ranks up there, but he's been very good and is having a great year this year uh, as well. Uh, number three, Joe Hayden. My, one of the best corners, really, and I think that's one thing everybody has to stop and appreciate because Joe Hayden didn't come back. Let's face it. He's not going to be a senior at Florida. He's going to go out. He's really one of the best corners that ever came here. Uh, when you think about where he came from, was a quarterback, was a wide receiver, they pull him over to the defensive side of the ball, and he becomes one of the best corners in the, in the SEC. People don't throw his way, and when they do, it's not good. Uh, so I would definitely put him in there. Number two, Brandon Spikes. I think uh, what he's done is body of work over the four years. He deserves to be on that list as well. And, of course, number one, Tebow. The question is, would Tim Tebow supplant the current number one or the number one we had in 2006, which was Danny Werfel? These are questions. to go, When you go to bed tonight, you're going to be thinking about it. Who would you rank number one, Tebow, Werfel? Where would you put Spikes? All that. See, it's thought-provoking. That's what this show is about. All right, we've got to take a break. We're going to come back, and since we couldn't get Charlie to come on the show, we're going to bring in Robbie for another appearance on Either Or. You can't miss that because it's Robbie Andrew. Come on, he's 55. Check out the Pat Dooley Show, brought to you by Wing Zone. Remember, when it comes to your next football party, Wing Zone has you covered. Now offering convenient delivery. Call 352-377-2473 or go online to wingzone.com to order today. All right, it's time to play either or again, and Robbie Andrews sitting in as well, and we appreciate standing in, standing in. That's right. We always appreciate him coming on because his vast knowledge of football, and also he's right across the hall, which makes it a lot easier. Cheap and available. Uh, cheap is and available. The term you're looking for. <laughs> That's right. Either or, Robbie, more likely to be the next coach at Notre Dame, Brian Kelly or John Gruden? Kelly, all the way. He's the perfect choice. You know, he, the, uh, the program he runs now with his offense is really good. Yep. And Gruden just signed that contract with ESPN, and I like him on Monday Night Football. I want him to stay. Yeah, so, uh, he's, he's very good. And yeah. I'm, you know, uh, you, contracts are made to be broken, as we know, but the thing about Kelly is, again, he's Catholic. So, so that, <laughs> but that, that whole thing means nothing. I know. I just think he's a guy, if they don't grab him, somebody else is. Wait a minute, I'm Catholic. He's a hot candidate. I'm a candidate. But you can't coach. I, I can't, you saw the plays I draw up. They're classics. Little bootlegs. I diffuse them easily with an X here and an X there. <laughs> Yeah, all right. uh, I'm, I'm declaring myself a candidate for the Notre Dame job. But Kelly's the guy that they should go after, and Gruden so to too. me. Not only that, but he's a good guy. They yeah. need, a, yeah. they really need a good guy in there because yeah. they've had a jerk for the last five years. Yeah, and Weiss was a coordinator. He didn't run a program. This guy's taking a team where you can't win and has won, and that's a sign of a good coach, yep. like Spurrier at Duke. And I heard him on Dan Meyer Patrick. Meyer at Utah. Yeah, and he was, uh, he was not diffusing it. Let's put it no. that way. All right, number two on either or. More likely to score on Saturday in the Swamp, Deontay Thompson or Dante Owens? Dante Owens has scored three touchdowns this He year, has, though. yes. So he could, but I think Deontay Thompson because, you know, they're going to be throwing the ball around a little bit. The defense they're facing is awful, yeah. giving up over 400 a game. So this is the time when you give guys like Thompson a little confidence. Give them a play, give them some confidence. So I think so, too. I see Thompson in the end zone. I see a lot of guys in the end zone. And I think they're going to want to throw – they're almost going to be impatient on offense in this game because they want to get up and get everybody yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Get a lead and get those guys on the bench. All right, number three, least likely to win the Heisman this year, Toby Gerhardt or C.J. Spiller? I think Gerhardt, Pat, because he's a little bit under the radar – but, you know, that kid's an amazing talent. He is. And I was watching tape him the other day. He runs like Tim Tebow. He does. Yeah, in the open field, he runs. He looks a lot like Tim Tebow. When you look at what he's done, the last two weeks against top ten teams, now they're not top ten now, but they were when they played him, both Stanford wins, four and one rushing yards. They yeah. knew he was going to get the ball oh, and they yeah. couldn't stop him. They should he, put him in the Wildcat. They could. Let him run the spread a little bit. I think he could be a cool. See, I, I just can't see Spiller winning the Heisman on a three-loss team. His numbers are good, yeah. but, you know, they, they waited a while to get him. He's missed a game. He's with an injury. I, I just don't see that happening, yeah. but I still think December 5th is going to decide who the Heisman is. Oh, yeah. Who the I do, too. Is. I think that's going to play a big role in it. All right, finally, Robbie, on either or, most disappointing, more disappointing, I should say, season, Florida State or Georgia? Well, I think Georgia, Pat, the expectations weren't that high. You know, they've got a, a guy that's starting a fifth-year senior quarterback who hadn't really done anything. FSU had a lot of guys coming back. They come off that big yep. bowl win. 
where you know everything was positive, and then it looked like they were going to beat Miami all of a sudden down the tank, down the hole they went, you know. And I think the expectations were a little higher at FSU, and I don't think anybody saw that defensive collapse come. No, nobody saw that, that, but we did think that they were overrated in the preseason. Yeah, I think a lot of people. Yeah, that people had them way too high. Uh, but for Georgia to be 5-5, five and five, that, that still stuns me. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Tough schedule, though. Yeah. They've, had, they've had some tough road games. They've had some good wins, but the inexplicable losses where they've just been outplayed totally yeah. are, are hard to figure. And, you know, they're lucky they haven't had a couple other losses. Arkansas well, yeah. could have gotten them. Auburn was down there near yeah. the you know, Arizona State could have gotten them. Auburn could have yeah, gotten absolutely. them. Absolutely. So they, sure. they could be worse. So I guess they'll take it. All right, that's going to do it, Robbie. We're going to come back with Dr. Football's email bag next. All right, let's see what Dr. Football has. Thank you. All right, dear Dr. Football, Urban Meyer this week said he has not turned his computer on since the Tennessee game. He did. Uh, this means that most of the success the Gators have earned this year has come without the benefit of the knowledge revealed on the Pat Dooley Show. Is this really possible? Gary Albright, Cupertina, California. Boy, we've got a wide-ranging audience, don't we? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's possible. I think he's just making that up. You, you know he couldn't get it done without me, without me giving him advice. I Twitter him all the time. I, I text him all the time. I talk to him all the time. I have, I'm the reason Florida's 10-0. No, I'm not. Now, I, I believe that. I believe Urban Meyer has turned it off because the, with the distractions and all that's been out there, you know, you're just best off. In fact, I told his wife a couple weeks ago, I said, I'm just not going to listen to anything for a while because it's just unbelievable some of the stuff that's out there. Like guys saying he's going to Notre Dame who've never even met him because he's Catholic. Not, that, that's not why they didn't meet him. It's, they're saying that's why he's going to Notre Dame. And I'm like, we have Catholic churches here. We have priests. I, I know Father Jeff. That's, it. that's his priest. So, you know, anyway, I digress. All right, that's going to do it. Now, next week, we're not going to have a show. I know it's FSU week. I understand. But some people are going to do this crazy thing called observing Thanksgiving. So if you were going to wake up Thursday and quickly click on the Pat Dooley show, it won't be there because we're going to enjoy time with our family. That's what you should be doing, too. Take Thursday off from the Gators and just relax and enjoy your family because that's really what we're here for. Until championship week, yeah, we'll be back for SEC championship week. Pat Dooley saying so long from the Sunshine State.